connection. Okay, we are live on Facebook. We're just checking Instagram. Okay, great. We're live on Instagram as well. Hey everybody, welcome to the second live feed. We're doing this more regularly now. The first time was a bit here and there. We tried to figure out how to do the angles and everything. But I think we've got Facebook up here now and Instagram up there now. So I think we're set and um, everybody can see what's going on. So yeah, we've got some questions this week. Um, one from Evolt, which asked, which entrepreneurial books is the best to start with? Now, okay, I've read a lot of books, um, which I went through, but I would say the three best books as a, as a complete startup. So if you're just starting out on finances and don't really know all that you need to know about it and just want to like up your level of financial education and skill and understanding and mindset, I would say the following three books is, hi Henry, how's it going? Okay, great. So the first one I would say, and this is one everybody tells you about, is Rich Dad Poor Dad. Okay, it's from Robert Kiyosaki. Very nice, just to change your mindset and, and make you think differently about money and about how to use it and how to view money you know, as, as, a, as a financial you know, aspect. And then the second one, Facebook to come back. Okay, we have Facebook online again. It's South Africa, guys. So, you know, internet is always a struggle, as you know. So just to catch up with Facebook again, um, Instagram is, is paused now, re searching for signal reconnecting. Um, so we went through Robert Kiyosaki's Reach That Poor Dad, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and then also Rules of Wealth. That's my three books that I would suggest um, to, to read as a beginner, as a start out, um, and just get your financial skill up there, get your financial level up there, and just, you know, um, move to the next level. Okay, great. Okay, great. So Facebook is live again. We're still waiting for Instagram. Um, as I said, it's South Africa, signal problems, um, Wi-Fi problems all the time. We have a good line, but unfortunately, it's not always stable. Okay, great. So I think Instagram is back now and Facebook is back now. It's just some internet problems. As I said, okay, so just to recap, the three books that I would suggest to start up as you start on your journey um, to financial independence. And then obviously my book, Try the Millionaire 22. I think um, I put a lot of thought in it. Um, I've combined it and compressed it, all of the things that you need to know to get going. It's in there. Um, so yeah, um, give it a try. I think it can really help you on your journey. Okay, so the second question that we have is from Ruan Bretz and it is how to improve your company. Now that's a very broad question. Um, I think there's a lot of aspects that you can, you know, think about to improve your company. Um, but a few of the things or the, the general thing that I would kind of tackle if you want to improve your company is to do a value chain analysis. Now this is something we learn in industrial engineering. So what you need to do is you need to um, look at every little aspect of your business and what that, biz, what that does for your business. So if you have um, a supply chain, you look at every little aspect of that supply chain. And then you need to determine what your goal is, where you want the business to go. So if you want market share, then you look at every little piece of your business and see what contribution it's making to getting you more market share. And then you also need to then dis, uh, determine what the cost of that little piece is to give you market share. So then you weigh, weigh the pros and the cons in terms of 
how much does it contribute to the value that you wanted to, to, to contribute to and how much does it cost to get that value. So you can do that with the whole process of your business. For example, logistics, um, client support, um, management, um, every little aspect of your business. And you can then determine which of these aspects actually contributes to your end goal and what, are the, what does it cost to do that, to make the contribution. And then you just weigh these out and decide where to, to invest more money and more input and where to take some input or some money away. Hi, Chelsea just joined. Great. Okay, guys, so do you have any questions? Um, I answered Evald's question as well as Ron's question. Um, share some questions if you have. You can just comment them um, on the live feed and I will answer them um, as, as good as I can. Um, so yeah, just start posting your questions if you want. Uh, then we can we can talk about it. I think the importance of live feed is to really interact with the people and to and to just be able to to give access. Um, because if you need if I need to travel everywhere throughout the country, um, then I might not reach everyone. And I think if if you have the opportunity to just ask questions openly and um, you know we can we can talk about it and and and. Um, you know, you can pick my brain about these things. So if you have any questions, just um, post them. Yeah, I think, I think um, it's, it's a great journey that we're on at the moment. Um, we are busy with going to schools and to venues and to start talking to the youth about financial concepts and things um, that we need. So I think, okay, so here's a question. Okay, why is buying a new car a bad investment? Okay, great. So why is buying a new car a bad investment? Um, the thing is, you need to look at the decrease in value. So for example, if you buy a brand new Mercedes out of the box, as soon as you take the keys, you already lose a large percentage of the value of the car, um, just because it's not brand new anymore. You haven't even driven a kilometer with the car and you've already lost some value. So when buying a car, I normally look at the curve of when you start stop losing too much value and when it kind of plateaus. So for example, a new Mercedes um, has a lot of value when it's new, then it drops really quickly in the in the next few years and then kind of after two or three years, it starts to plateau and then the value kind of stays the same for a long while, like let's say for the next five years. And then eventually after that, the value will decrease again. But if you can rather buy a car at the place where the value kind of stabilize and plateaus, then you won't lose money, uh, a lot of money when buying a car at that stage. Whereas if you buy a car at the top, you immediately lose a lot of your investment um, just by buying it new. So, so that's just my thoughts on that. Um, and, um, yeah, you don't, uh, a car isn't necessarily always an asset. It can be a huge liability, but if you do your finances right and you understand the concepts right, and you look at, um, the right opportunity to buy a new car for yourself, you can actually get away with it not being that much of a liability and really being an asset towards your life or your business. Okay, everyone. I think um, that's, that's the live session for today. So uh, thank you, Maria, Robert, um, JJ, Quintus, and there's a lot of people that joined in. Thank you guys for joining in. And thank you, Yevold and Ruan for your questions. And um, great. Thank you for, for joining in for the live session. We will do this more regularly. Also, go check out the website, www.millionaire.com. Um, dot millionaire at 22.com and you can um, see what's what's what we're up to and what we're doing on there and then we can keep in touch great guys and um, enjoy the rest of the day